6,065 pound Sunnybrook Super Slide rear living couples model here at Haywood RV of Coldwater, Michigan, just coming in on trade. And uh, overall, looks okay. There is a spot uh, back where the chairs would be, because it does not currently have any rocking chairs or anything in the back, that has experienced a leak in the past. We're going to examine that first and foremost, get it out of the way, and kind of go from there. So one of the tricks with RVs is there's there's no car facts for camping, so I have to play CSI, Camp Scene Investigator, to try to piece things together. And uh, when we uh, discovered the defect I'm about to show you here, we naturally asked the customers, and they were very forthright with their information. They're very good people who own this, and I mean, the lady of the house who traded this in, she cleaned the life out of this thing. It is, it is you know, like physically clean in here. Um, the word clean sometimes in the sales business can mean jargon, like, oh, it's super sharp and nice. In this case, it's physically clean. Overall, the RV is nice, but it has had a spot here in the corner. Um, if you look for the most part, like I've tapped around all the, the walls and stuff, they're all solid, but right here under this window, this has been compromised. Now, like I said, there have been at least two previous owners. The story the most recent owners were given was that uh, it was like that way when it was traded in. The previous, potentially original owners simply left a window open one night when it rained. I, knowing the dealership that they purchased this from, who's no longer around, so I'm not throwing darts, and I'm not naming names, but it, I, I, I'm a little bit suspect of that story. Especially when I hop out here around that window, and I can see that it was clearly resealed all the way around. Now, it's possible that is uh you know oh here it comes i'm using the force to close the door there luke skywalker but it's possible this was just proactive um it, it's hard to say regardless there has been water exposure below the window on the inside over there now if that's a deal breaker for you ladies and gentlemen a halo rv i completely respect it but if you're okay with what is effectively a cosmetic defect that would be covered about the moment you put a chair over here, be very much out of sight, out of mind. Everything else on this RV is pretty sharp. Like, there's a lot of good to be had here. You throw a couple chairs or something on that rear wall, and you are going to be in business. Uh, the, the business of doing no business, relaxing, R&R, &R, having fun, you know? Uh, there's That's the only not awesome thing I really discovered about this RV, because otherwise... It looks pretty good. This was a brand that, uh, when Sunnybrook was still around, they're unfortunately no longer with us, in a sense. Um, they uh, they were a well-respected brand. I say in a sense because um, Winnebago Tobel Division is actually a, uh, a retooled Sunnybrook. Um, Winnebago bought Sunnybrook and turned their Tobel production in Middlebury, Indiana, into the Winnebago travel trailers that we know today. Now, nothing like what we're looking at is currently built. So that's why I say it's kind of, in a sense, it's there, in a sense, they're not. But always a very well-respected builder. They were just never that large back in their day of uh, Sunnybrook being an independent brand. Um, the, uh, you know, Super Slide over here giving us plenty of room. Sofa and dinette both fold down into sleepers. And I tell you, how about that kind of regal red sort of, uh, you know, color accent palette around here? There, there's a lot of bare accents and red. I don't know if one of the previous owners put that in. I, I don't know if that was actually a Sunnybrook thing. All I know is that I do like the lighter kind of honey oak sort of color patterns that we have going on in here. It very much reminds me of like an old classic Jayco built during this period, which had very, very similar wood tones. Now, this was made before the age of flat screens. It kind of had those old tubey boxy TVs. And it didn't used to be that television was the main focus of a travel trailer, at least not to the extent that it is today. Um, there is a, if I slide up here just a little bit, uh, kind of a split bath sort of arrangement. A little more classic. You don't see that as much. Uh, I tell you what, I'll get in here and spin around a little. But the idea behind it is that it can keep the RV shorter, lighter, and, uh, you know, still give you all the main functions. Like we've got our north-south queen bed, normal dual hanging closets and side stands and all that kind of thing. If my eyes don't deceive me, though, that is a 60 by 80 queen, not a camp queen, which is going to be awful nice. Now, around the uh, corner over here, <laughs> more bear accents, you see, um, you know, I mean, they're they're everywhere, these bear accents, like here in the, the cabinet doors. But I, I like, I kind of like that behind the glass, almost 
digital effect. It's different. I like different. I like a nice little touch like that. You don't like it, I'm sure it could be removed. But uh, around the corner, we have our second entry door, which you can deadbolt for security. That's there for fire code reasons, by the way. People go, why do they put a door in the bedroom? Mm, fire code, they have to. You have to have an escape near a sleeping space. You can throw a TV against the wall, but the previous owner came up with a nice little hanging solution, probably for some jackets or something like that. And very similar to a motorhome, you see the little clip on the door up there. Well, that's going to catch the door and basically close off and privatize the uh, bedroom bathroom area here. Now, um, over here, we've got like almost like a fifth wheel, like sliding glass shower. Now, you don't have to like try to sneak around this corner. The, the doors are just slid over to the side. You can just as easily slide them over there the other way. With some excellent linen space in here. That is always a, a welcome find in an RV with plenty of leg and hip and shoulder and foot room around the toilet right there. Porcelain foot flush, by the way. And then over here in the corner, naturally, we have our, our sink and vanity station. But what's kind of nice about this, I like it's not a conventional layout by today's standards, but it creates a nice big chunk of floor space right here where when that door is, you know, cutting off the living space, it's very private. You can actually just stand here and get dressed real quick, which a lot of little campers don't always provide. Now you might be noticing the big black power awning on there. That is absolutely not the original factory hardware. Actually, if you look below the awning arms, you can see the original manual awning cleats where uh, you know you could attach, detach the awning. Um, I don't know why they swapped out the awning. I mean, maybe they just wanted a power awning, but it was professionally done. Now naturally, you can see a little bit of wiring. You know, uh, since there there was no wiring originally run, but overall it was a pretty clean execution. They did a good job of it. I think you slap a power tongue jack on this thing and hit the road. She's, you know, not bad. There's a little flaking, fading of some of the decals, but I think some of that just goes along with age. It wasn't stored in a time capsule. It was used. It was stored outside. But overall, other than that spot below that window, I can't find any real structural, any real major concerns with it. Big storage compartments on this thing. Holy cow. Like, if I start talking in here, you can almost literally hear an echo. <laughs> and of course, being a rear living room, it is just outfitted, decked out to the nines with as many big windows as they possibly could on here. We're going to get up on that vaulted exterior roofing in just a second to take a look at everything up there. I'm, I haven't been up yet, but I'm not really predicting uh, anything too darn scary. Overall, like I said, little, little, little decal stuff. Maybe I'd take a power washer and take off the worst of the flaky stuff, but other than that, from ground level, not too bad. And it could maybe use just a basic seasonal cleaning up here, but I, I've seen a lot worse. This is not bad. This doesn't really scare or offend me too much. I can see where the seals have had some touch-up beads gone over them, so I see good signs of preventative care. I do think, just simply given the age of the RV, it's something that you want to start paying attention to. Kind of like if you got a used car, you really... You know, you got to start really watching stuff like your fluids and your brakes and all that kind of stuff versus a new car where you don't have to worry about that stuff right away. It's kind of how I feel about this one. So, if you like what you see, give us a call. And if not, know that we've got plenty of other options for you, Aylid RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.